handle with the Good evening, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, sports fans of all kinds, hopefully basketball fans, and we are coming to you live right now from the Schaefer Center here in Waxahachie, Texas, on the campus of Southwestern Assemblies of God University. You have tuned in to the feature presentation of Sagu Sports Network. This is a double header where the Lions are playing host to Southwestern Christian University. So Southwestern Assemblies of God University, don't get them confused, will be playing host to Southwestern Christian University. The Eagles, the Lady Eagles have done very well in the Sooner Athletic Conference season. They're nine and nine, of course, I am sure you're familiar with the uh, Lady Lions of Sagu coming in. It's been a really tough year for Coach Sons and his squad. But don't let that 4-15 and 15 record fool you because these young ladies are really coming together and finding their groove playing together. And it's a lot of youngsters. They lost three of their starters right from week one. It's been a tough go at it. Now they're starting to come together and play great. I have them as a plus five win tonight on this floor against a great Southwestern Christian ladies team. We're going to throw it down to the court right now where the pregame festivities, the opening prayer, the national anthem, and the starting lineups are about to happen. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network.
Southwestern Christian University. Number one, Dave Mason. Number three, MJ Case. Number 10, Trisha Gabriel. Number 22, Delaney Rockman. Number 31, Laura Williams. All right, there you have it, the starting lineups for both of these teams. And Southwestern Christian University comes in um, with a good record, a very uh, moderate. In, in the, they are in the mix for the postseason to play at least in the first round of eight. Sagu, no shot. We'll just call it like it is. Uh, but this is a building year. This will also be a mark uh, the last home game for the Lady Lions this year. So this is going to be fun. I think it's uh, it's not that it's important, but it it, it will be uh, crucial that they end on a high note. So it would be good to see them get a win. Along my side tonight is the head coach for the men's, Sagu's men's program, Coach Delton Deal. So good to have you here, Coach. Uh, tell us a little bit. What do you know about Southwestern Christian University? Uh, Lady good, Line. Good, uh, Lady good basketball team. Uh, very well coached. I've known their coach, Mark Arthur, for a long time. He actually used to coach the men's team back when I started at the school I was coaching at before I came down here, York College. He was in our conference. So I've seen him coach for a long time. Great coach. Gets his players to play well. I know that their point guard, Tresha Yeager, Coach Sons, was her high school coach right before wow. he came here to Sagu. So little, you know, they know each other very well and should make for an interesting uh, dynamic. They also are without um, their leading score, I think, uh, is injured and out today. They're trying to figure out exactly how hurt she is. But very good player they're missing in the interior. Wow. Good insider knowledge there. Thank you, Coach Dill. And while you were talking, Fast back to <laughs> back, yeah, back to back threes for these teams. So we're knotted up at three. Oh, that's a fantastic over the middle. Just penetrate and shoot. Fantastic look. That's one of those shots you play good defense and you feel okay about it and then you just say, well, sometimes good offense beats good defense. That was MJ Case, by the way. Got our first whistle of the night. And I didn't catch who that was uh, on. Lavender working, trying to get something done. And there's Moravic. She hit the first three for the Lady Lions. She's had a great end run here sure. in the Sooner Athletic Conference. She's starting, it looks like Moravic is now feeling comfortable with her game and uh, you see the, that the confidence is showing from the three-point line, although she can really score in the paint. Her game is starting to blossom here at Sagu. And confidence is such a key thing for a young player, and she's always been a great rebounder, but she's starting to put everything together now and become better. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. 
from number 10. And you you, right. you said she was a shooter and played for Coach Sons, the SAGU coach, Tresha Yeager. Very good player. He loves her. I know they're real close. And, you know, she's a leader and a tough competitor, can shoot it, can do a little bit of everything. And that was Tucker with the missed three-pointer. No shot at a rebound. So great defensive rebounding by the Lady Eagles. Good ball movement, wide open. There's got to be some kind of defensive contest. Lady Lions uh, got off the hook there with a miss from MJ Case, but and Lavender goes to the bench limping. Looks like she may have turned her ankle. See if we can see it here. That might have been why she got that open look. Mm. I think she was having a hard yeah. time getting out there. She yeah, she was stuck in that spot uh, for about five seconds. Yeah. Like we've come out in a five out offense. We're playing a little smaller and spreading them out and creating driving lanes for just like that one right there. Oh, wow. Great move. Coming off the, the miss last possession. That can sometimes play with your head a little bit. And it's good to see Tucker, just a freshman, yeah. just really show confidence in her game and slash to the basket with the ball and get a bucket. You got to love the fact that she just went after it. Right after, like you said, little failure, no big deal. Going to come out and just do it again. Whoa, 22 in the dark jerseys. That's Delania Raymer, I believe, is how you pr pronounce her name. It's either Reimer or Raymer. I'll say Raymer till one of y'all correct me. And that was the third straight possession that Tucker took a shot. Oh, good rebound by Case. And that's going to stay with the Eagles. You know, they really started with a lot of pace. Very, very good energy. Um, SCU come out here and playing very hard and, you know, forcing the issues and making a couple tough shots early on. Be interesting to see if we can match that energy and, you know, take it right back at them. Maybe one of the things Coach Sons is willing to give up, and it looks like uh, right now, although that's a great rebound by Moravic, is some of the rebounding power that you have when you go with your smaller lineup, For but sure. quicker. And that one's off by Moravic. Here come the Lady Eagles. Very patient offense from SCU. Willing to work the clock at eight. That shot was taken. Moravic comes out with the rebound. That one was well off the mark. Here comes Tucker to Moore. Moore up top to Cheney Chambers. Tucker going to sit on, on the wing. Tilly Bedick fakes. Cheney Chambers can shoot. Gets it back to Moravic. Moore. Great ball movement by the Lady Lions. Left-handed toss by Autumn Moore. Good address, aggressive drive. I think she took off a little bit further away than she thought she was and tried to adjust in the air, but was a little far away. I also think that it looked like the, the, her, the way her body language was when she went into it, she thought there was going to be more contact. Probably. Oh, that's a big time three by Tresha Yeager. I am sure that's not the last time we will be calling her name and number. She's already got six points. I'm sorry, uh, she hit the first three. She's got nine, three three-point attempts with three makes. Shooting 100% from the three-point line. Here she comes again. She's feeling it. That one's nothing but the bottom of the net. Jaeger pumped up. And she has her Lady Eagles bench very hype as well. Coach Sun's going to get a quick timeout. And not ideal to be losing one of the better shooters on the team. And, you know, she's got a couple open looks. Now she's got herself yep. going and well, gonna it, have to find a way to cut that faucet off. And right now it looks like uh, 
Coach Suns is going with that zone, that 2 3 style of uh, defense. And SEU just seeing where to be, and it's kind of wide open. Not a whole lot of these shots being contested. So I expect that will be one of the big adjustments he's going to make. And just, hey, look, remember, extend the defense. Right. You, just because we're in a zone doesn't mean that it's got to be small. Right. So we'll see if they make a quick adjustment here in the first quarter on the fly. Tilly Bedick gets it to fall. That was probably 24 feet out, coach. That was a big shot out of the timeout and underneath the screen. Huge. Had an opening and took it confidently. The good ball movement by the Eagles continues. Ooh. And that's just a a, a really good take by MJ Case to get, uh, she knew she had the bigger player. She knew she could get around her and probably get a body foul. Yeah, she did a good job creating that angle. Yeah. But the two, the two, uh, you know, centers are in for, for the Lady Lions now. And so one of them is going to be guarding a quick perimeter player. And you have to move your feet and help her out on the backside. Case misses both of those free throws, so no damage done. Good foul by Jazz Williams as 2020 yields out to be great insight, the 2020 hindsight. Oh, That's what. Looks smart, it? <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right. Um, Cheney Chambers. Oh, that's a great. It was started off with a fantastic pass. Watch this. Tucker brings both players. Knew that somebody was open, and Jazz Williams did the right thing and dropped down in the paint, made herself available, and then got the easy shot there. Yeah, Tucker, oh. Tucker was such a bright future. She's so, she keeps her eyes up. She always knows where she's going. She plays like a true point guard. The game's starting to slow down for her as we get later in the season. Yeah. You're starting to see a lot of what made her such a great high school player as well. Yeah, and I think these role positions are beginning to take over the player. Like the player is now confident in their role. And that is a big struggle usually with freshman players that come in. What is my, unless they're just this all-world type of player and they know what they're going to do no right. matter what but most of the time and i you could speak to this in college basketball your youngsters that come in from high school they see all the the older guys out there and they just want to play but they also know they got to play the role because that's being preached at practice it's hard for them to really feel confident and comfortable early on and later in the year it seems like there it is, Cheney Chambers. I was calling her number just the last possession. She can really shoot. Yeah, we, you know, one thing we say about the freshmen is as you get to the end of the first season, are you really still a freshman if you played 20-something games under True. your belt by that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By that point, you have so much experience. It's almost like, you know, you start to find your way and know who you are, especially whenever your role expands and you start to get to play a little more. Yeah. So that's what we're seeing from her and a couple of the other girls on here, too. Yeah, you're a freshman, but you're not a rookie. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Some of the veteran savviness better have rubbed off from right. the older players. Yeah, and you hope that you've learned some lessons throughout this year. And so now, yeah. you, we're in our last couple weeks of the season. You know, yeah. at this point, you shouldn't still be thinking about what's happening. You should just be playing the game. And so, and so that is, it, you know, looking for that silver lining in the cloud right yeah. now uh, from um, uh, an unusually uh, – um, season that, that didn't yield out a lot of wins right um you're going okay where where are we improving and where is that you can definitely uh, see the youngsters improving they're not the same team that they were definitely even a month ago so yeah. you're, you're seeing the confidence switch and you're seeing you know people start to believe and you know a big part of that you know as somebody with insider information you're starting to see them in the gym more yep. often yep. Um, you know getting the extra work in because the confidence is growing and when that happens you know you see them excited about the games coming because they know that they have a chance to do something big so you know it, it's nice to see and I think this is going to be a great um, springboard into what's happening in the future right 
It was just three or four weeks ago that Sag the Lady Lions would get down 16 to 5, mm -hmm. and then it would be 25 to 5. Right. And now, like you see what's happening here, they're just, like, like we were saying, they're better. That should have been a foul. Wow. No call. Sure seemed like she got some contact and on her going, arm right there. And yeah. They're going to give Cheney Chambers the foul here. Um, and that, that'll go over to the Lady Eagles. But uh, it, it, it's now it's 16-13. Cheney Chambers got the steal there. Could have made it 15-16. to 16. So the Lady Lions are definitely trending the right way. McMahon with the big rebound. Yeah, you can see the Lady Lions have really settled into this game. They're starting to, you know, they understand the pacing. They've, they found the, the one shooter that's been hitting all the shots, and now they're, you know, it's calm. It's just a regular basketball game now, and we like what we're getting out of our uh, actions offensively, and the good things are happening defensively. The big, Jazz Williams tries to get a finesse pass and just threw it into the hands of the defense. I think, Kyle, I think Kyle was a little closer than she expected, and her man was able to help off and yeah. steal that one. I don't think she saw her there. That should go the other way. It does. Cheney Chambers doing big things in this first quarter for her team. Yeah, I love the way Cheney plays. Cheney's so competitive. She, yep. you know, she's she's a tough player and and does all those little things. And so, you know, as she improves all the other skill aspects of her game, you know, you can't there, you can't replace this force that she has inside her that she impacts when she gets on the floor. Yep. So she makes a big difference. And every time she's in, it seems like positive things are happening. And that's why her role's been expanding as the year goes on. You earn those minutes as the season goes. Tilly Beddick loses the ball. And they were, it, it was going to have to be a desperation try anyway. So, no harm, no foul, I guess. And the, the teams go back to their benches. And Sagu did a great job turning an 11-point deficit into just a three-point deficit in about two minutes. So, fantastic job. Don't give up. And this is what we've been saying. Yep. It's okay. You're going to... You're not going to win every quarter. Just don't get blown out in yeah. any one quarter and make this a competitive game. Uh, first quarters, historically, for the Lady Lions this year has not been their quarter, but they respond second and third quarter. Their scoring seems to come alive, and they, they get their groove, and they really do good things. So I'm expecting a... A, and at least plus three second quarter for the Lady Lions here. Yeah. You know. So in, in the last five minutes of the game, uh, of the first quarter, uh, the defense tightened up. And we said, you know, Coach Suns called the timeout. Yeah. And we, we said, it up. hey, yeah. you, you, you can't just let people shoot out. Well, what did he do? He made the adjustment. And they – held them scoreless for the last five minutes. And that's what I was saying earlier about the faucet was open, Tresha was scoring the ball, and, they, and you know, they made an adjustment and took that away, and now they're having to seek offense. Jazz Williams with the classic back down in the paint and shoot over, good bucket. That's what we need to see more of, and right there. She's such a great interior player, such a great uh, offensive interior player for sure. And, um, you know, whenever she's really bringing it and they're play, able to play through her, it does so much for their team. That shot was contested just a little bit late by Chambers getting there, but uh, you're starting to see the defense extend out. And that's just a fantastic hit great dribble penetration good find on time on target you know, nothing i'm not going to be too mad about that one tilly Bedick, no good from long range she's a streaky shooter when she gets on and she's feeling it she can fill that bucket up and then when she's off she she's yeah. as you saw it was, the, it was the same shot she saw earlier at that time i think she was a little surprised by it and just kind of rushed it and didn't get her full compliment through it but she's going to hit some big shots in this game McMahon gets out, but not 
in time, and that is back to back for Delaney Raymer. That was a tough shot. Good offense. So a quick five points or six six points. So a six zero run since Sagu scored last. Chambers backed away from it like she knew it was going in. It looked good. It That's a long way out too. Way out there. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when the when the uh, defenders go underneath the screen, you can get yourself a little far away and you feel like you're open and yep. can shoot it a little further than you wanted to be. So it's important to set your man up before that. Well, she's got tons of confidence from anywhere on the on their side of the floor. Nice drive. Gets the contact. She's going to shoot two. That's Kaylin Tucker. Great trend. Way to turn defense into offense right there. They really got on them quick. They ran their lanes well, spread the floor out. Good push from Neely. She saw the entire floor. And then way to be aggressive again from KK, what we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, the fact that she's being so aggressive and seeking out things and playing with so much confidence. She's putting a lot of pressure on the defense. Yeah, I'd like to see that even a little more from her. Uh, even if, if she doesn't make it, it, that's not a big deal because it's going to condition the defense to have to pull pull down on her, which I think will ultimately open up good shots for Williams and McMinn. Yeah, she's such a good passer. She she sees the whole floor, so she, anytime she can get two feet in the paint, it's going to be a win for the Lions. It's a five-point ball game. Tucker makes both of those. Quick shot. Oh, the hot hand <laughs> is continuing. That's Caitlin Taylor coming off the bench. A quick trigger. They're looking to shoot it, and they're shooting it confidently, and they're making everything right now. So, big like surprise it. Autumn, but great way to go back at her, though. Yeah. Yep. Autumn Moore goes down. They know, and I think the, the philosophy here is, yeah, we, we've got to play the perimeter defense. It will ultimately pay off, and they're not going to shoot, you know, 75% right. for the whole game. And, you know, SEU, to give them credit, losing, you know, a dominant interior force um, to come out here and the guard be ready to play is, you know, it's impressive. They're ready to go, and it looks like they're trying to rise to the occasion. The Lady Eagles can do no wrong on offense at the moment. They took a, about a six-minute scoring drought and have turned it into 11 quick points in this second quarter. Jazz Williams hits a very hard shot from about 10 to 11 feet out on the corner. Nice, nice play creation again from Taylor. Good job getting into the middle of the paint. You get into the middle of the paint, create opportunities. Um, that's where we're really seeing success from our team, and they got to keep on doing that. I love this exchange. I don't. I hopefully the the replay will go far enough back. Watch, watch Jazz Williams here. A lot of players get lost, and she immediately just switches arms, and now she's playing defense. She's got all the leverage with that right arm, front facing defense. So that, that's technique and that's years sure. of just yeah, playing. That's instincts and being coached well and doing things right. So you see a lot of defense get lost on that. And that's an easy backdoor play that's called, uh, you know, either the give and go or uh, it's a it, it's it's a classic small guy to to your big man yeah. setup. And that's what they were looking for. Yeah. Jazz Williams kept that from happening. Now, the. Lady Eagles did a great job scoring and, and continuing it, mm -hmm. but I just saw that. Oh. You keep playing fundamentally good basketball, it will pay off. Lavender from way out. Good to see her back in the game running around. It looks like she had to get retaped a little bit, and she's back out there moving pretty good. So, And that is... One of the first misses in possession for So the the referee stopped the game, said something to the table.
and they're trying to work something out. Now the referees will talk about it. They're actually going to go over and talk to Coach Godding. And uh, so something, I don't know if something was said from uh, the scores table or whatever, but uh, Coach Godding is the athletic director for the Lions, and there have been shot clock problems and things like that because some of this yeah. stuff is on wireless. So maybe they're taking a look at uh, some technical difficulties um, going on, but uh, it's uh, hard to tell um, exactly up here, at least from our vantage, where we're kind of disconnected and um, uh, behind the glass, so we don't hear what's going on. I guess they're telling them, yeah. So this is still going to be uh, just a play stop. Uh, uh, Sagu had the ball, so no real call. Um, they just got whatever it was back in order. Lady Lions with the ball. Oh, over the top. That was a great move. I think I'm, I'm, I know she's got to be comfortable, and it's tough. It, she's had such a big knee injury, and all that will never leave your mind as a yeah. player. But i uh, like to see Jazz maybe lean in instead of going back. I think that ball goes in, and she gets the foul. Yeah, she got to the spot she wanted. She, she just did. didn't look like she kept her balance on her shot. And that's going to be too much contact from the Lady Eagles. The bigs were going at it here. Oh, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I did, there wasn't a lot of contact there, so not sure what. they said they clipped their leg. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But that's a good call for the Lady Lions. That one's off for Riley Lavender. Here come the Eagles. I think Riley just needs to settle back into the game after the injury. She's out yep. for a minute. She's trying to get herself back in there, and she's such an important player for the team. So, And she's the kind down. of player, yeah, no, yeah. she's the kind of player that's not going to just, oh, that's a double dribble. Uh, that, that will not haunt her. She'll just, she knows how to shoot her way back in, and you're right. Yeah. Sometimes when the, uh, if it's an a ankle twist or a sprain, you got to feel where it is, how much pressure you can put it, because it was her right foot that she was limping on, and that is her plant foot to get most of the balance for when she shoots. That's going to be, go, go the other way on uh, Jazz Williams. So now it's even. <laughs> so a charging foul for both of the bigs. Yeah, she did a good job of getting in the way there and selling the call. And, you know, anytime you go straight through someone, they're going to you leave oh, yeah, to you, the hands you of the got, it, so you You're not going to win that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> just under four minutes left to play in the second quarter. 29-21. Eagles over the Lions. Case, that's a nice jumper. She's just got a very solid way of handling and getting into her shot. Yeah, she's really athletic. She gets to her spots quickly. You gotta be on your, you gotta keep yourself on a swivel and really see where she is and everybody's gotta have eyes on her because she's making a lot of plays out here. Tilly Bedick gets it to Jazz Williams. Oh, big swing for Jazz Williams. She was like, you are not going to no. score. You're she not going to force her play right yeah. there. She wasn't trying to wall up or not draw a foul. She yep. was going after the ball. Yeah, and I think she she may have tweaked her knee. She's kind of limping. I noticed the last two possessions, she uh, was really not hobbling, but favoring that left knee that has given her so much problems. 
Yeah, you know, it's always a constant a maintenance thing after, it a, really is. after an injury. And, and not just a physical maintenance, man. It's a mental. Her, yeah. Pumped her leg a little bit, yeah, too. Yeah, they want to take that up. Yeah, it's not just the physical. It's the mental. No, it's all but, it, and so. I would say that's the hardest. Yeah. I, like, uh, players at this level have learned to play with pain and, yeah. and deal with just the physical injury part. That's n While it can be a big deal, it's not the biggest part of it. Oh, that's way off on the right side for Mary Jo Parker. And a little too much contact there from Riley Lavender. Oh, yeah. She oh, yeah. Set a screen. She ran into it, never really saw it coming. And <laughs> just, or, or she did and went right through it. Yeah, she was at full speed. Long range bomb from Jaeger. That was a heat check. Yeah, it was. Well, maybe the first three that she's missed. I, I haven't seen her take another one since the three that she made. Maybe she has, but she hasn't missed much. After the hot spot, after the hot uh, start, you know, you think that thing's wide open and you're going to. Shoot it whenever you can. That was a good looking shot. I look for Lavender. The next shot will yeah. probably go in. You could see she stepped into that, that one yeah. with great rhythm. Oh, moving well laterally, too. Well, you know how ankle injuries are. They bother you for a minute, and then once you get that adrenaline pumping, you can make through the next little bit. And that's going to be a foul, a team foul on. The Lions. Not sure who they assess that to. It looked maybe like Autumn Moore. She's got three fouls. So. And this is Jaden Mason. getting both of those to fall. So it's a 12 point lead at the moment. Just under two minutes left to play. Southwestern Christian 33, Sagu 21. For our radio audience out there. Lavender. Planting in well, so like it. Quick shot, and that's what that's a that's called a shooter's roll. Yeah. That's just when you're a good shooter, you can be off a little bit, but somehow it goes in. And that's Moravic. And good job by Riley. She missed a shot, got a rebound back, and you know was aggressive that time and drew it and opened it up. Cheney Chambers getting her hand on the ball again. The 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 queen of just defensive gamble and winning. Oh, that is a great. Down low post play. She did a good job winning her position early. Didn't have to do a whole lot once she caught the ball. She was already in great position. Lauren Wade. Lavender. Trying to make a decision. Gets it out to Parker. Now Tucker runs into the double team. Parker. Floater by Tucker, no good. And just four and a half seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. Looks like the Lady Eagles are content to trying to work this down to a one shot situation, at least in their possession. And this is what you do, you go all the way down and then shoot up a really high and then get the rebound yeah. like that. They got two clean looks at it. Here comes Lavender. Oh, no good. Last ditch effort by Riley Lavender almost goes in. It's just an 11 point ball game. Nothing spectacular and deficit that we haven't seen the Lady Lions come back from already. They were, they were, they were down 11 early in the first quarter, brought it back to one. So we know they can do it. They just got to, you know, hunker down and 
and find the defensive will yeah. to stop some shooters, stop some of these hot streak moments that the Lady Eagles have uh, performed well with, and then uh, – Tune up the offense a little bit. All right. Well, just like Southwestern Christian into the first quarter on a drought, I think the Lady Lions had a little drought of their own at the end of that second quarter. And so, you know, it was a tough offensive half. Um, some good things defensively, some a few lapses, but definitely some things they can build off of and just build up that momentum, start getting that body movement a little bit better and uh, find ways to get some baskets and get back in this game. Sagu averages, the Lady Lions average 33 points per half. So you can see they're about nine points under, uh, not achieving uh, their normal margin or their normal average, uh, their, their way of scoring. I'm getting a little bit of <laughs> tongue tied there. And, um, and Southwestern Christian actually uh, right on the mark, right on the mark for where they are in average. I think they averaged 36 yeah. uh, per half. So right there. So they, they did what they normally do. And like you say, that's something considering they're, they're missing one of their power players yeah. down in the paint, which I find sometimes, you know, you, mi you, you, know. you miss a player and the team just rallies together yeah, you know, and plays. A couple years ago for us, we lost a great player at the end of the year. And, you know, we, we played great basketball after yep. he went down. And then you know, the players took it as a challenge. And, you know, everybody came together. And that belief and, yeah. you know, it brings you together because it's such a hard thing to deal with. Right. But in, in the, you know, struggle that you're going through, mm -hmm. you find camaraderie and you come together. And the next thing you know, you're playing the best you can. And yeah, I know. you're like, man, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of fun. So stay tuned. We'll be back with second half action of this great Lady Lions matchup against Southwestern Christian University of Oklahoma. And you're watching the Sagu Sports Network. Raising Cane's makes perfect chicken finger meals by marinating every chicken finger for 24 hours. That's a long time. I don't even know what I was doing 24 hours ago. But those mouth-watering chicken fingers were marinating the entire taste-tempting time. Impressive since 24 hours is longer than most celebrity marriages. On that note, our chicken fingers, cane sauce, crinkle cut fries, coleslaw, and Texas toast are the perfect marriage of fresh and tasty. Raising Cane's, one love.
here is the perfect chicken finger. Four of them, actually. They're hand battered. They're cooked to order. And made with love. Raising Cane's chicken fingers will make you say, Oh, yeah. Raising Cane's chicken fingers, one love. I would tell students to expect to make their lifelong friends. It's not hard to find your community because SAGU is home. You can find people that either have the same passion as you or it can be completely different, but at the same time, you're able to network, but they're also gonna help you along the way too. There's such a community there, and throughout my three years at SAGU, I built so many connections, so many opportunities and not only the students care about you they pray for you and they guide you to your god-given gift and your god-given talent community starts here At Raising Canes, we're huge football fans, but we're also fans of your local fundraisers and fun runs, small victories and big ideas. And yes, even the neighborhood animal shelter. I was getting to that. Plus over 30,000 other partners in the communities we serve. When you order our hand battered chicken fingers, craveable cane sauce, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade to cheer on your home team, you're also supporting your hometown. Raising Canes chicken fingers, one love.
Amazing Canes makes perfect chicken finger meals by marinating every chicken finger for 24 hours. That's a long time. I don't even know what I was doing 24 hours ago. But those mouth-watering chicken fingers were marinating the entire taste-tempting time. Impressive, since 24 hours is longer than most celebrity marriages. On that note, our chicken fingers, cane sauce, crinkle-cut fries, coleslaw, and Texas toast are the perfect marriage of fresh and tasty. Raising Cane's, one love. All right, we're back live in the Schaefer Center here on the campus of Southwestern Assemblies of God University where the Lady Lions are playing host to Southwestern Christian University from Oklahoma. They are the Eagles, and they had a really good first half. Who really showed out was Tresha Yeager. She had a fantastic First quarter, she hit the first three three-point shots of the game uh, for for the Eagles, and man, just couldn't miss missed well at that particular time, and then eventually missed one, and then came back in the second quarter and hit her fourth three-pointer. So she had four made three-point shots in the first half. They have her uh, going four for seven. I only remember maybe two misses, so I missed one. Still fantastic, shooting well over 50%. Now we're back to action. And the Lady Eagles have possession first in the third quarter. Continuing with the good ball movement around the court. And this is Wade. She's so good. Great pump fake there. And Wade has four points, three rebounds for the game. Tucker gets it out to Lavender up top. Lavender with the pump fake. They're going to get Chaney Chambers with the over the back foul. And that's going to, even though it's rebounded by the Eagles, it will stay with the Eagles. Thirteen point lead. Mason goes across court to Case. Case misses that one. She had a hot hand as well in the first quarter. She's got four, though. Lavender reaches up. Good looking shot. Just can't get one to fall yet. She tweaked her ankle and Took, a little, took her a little bit longer to get going, but she's moving around well now. Good rebound by Moravic. Tucker just goes strong. Cheney Chambers goes through the middle, picks it up, gets the loose ball, gets it out to Moravic. Now they slow it down. Get it into the point guard's hands. That one got tipped. Good defense by the Eagles. And then it was touched by a Sagu player. That was Tilly Bedick who knocked it out. The 
been a little bit of a scoring drought for the Lady Lions. Oh. Wade makes it look so easy. Here comes Tucker. Gets it to Moravic. Moravic passes out to Chambers. Chambers, that's just in and out. Looked great. Case driving down the middle. Going to get the foul. It's going to count. And that is going to be a foul on Kaylin Tucker. And Case, MJ Case, will get a chance for the old fashioned three point play. And she gets it. Case now with seven points. Macy Smith checks into the ball game, but that pass a little too wide. She couldn't wrangle it in. It goes out of bounds. It is Eagles ball. That is a really great pass. Full timeout now called by Coach Michael Sons for the Lady Lions. And they've got some talking to do. They're just getting beat on the angles and maybe taking some risk that are unnecessary instead of just playing fundamentally move your feet, stay in front of your player that you're guarding type of defense. Looks like maybe they're trying to get anxious and set up so that they can get a steal. Sometimes that gets you out of balance and will cause you to get out of position and then make a mistake in trying to make up the difference. And that is what happened there. MJ Case beat her man to off the dribble to the paint and now the bigs had to get sucked in there to help out on defense and that left Wade wide open for a five footer. Great recognition by MJ Case. Tillybetic passes up McMinn. The run of the wheel out on the perimeter. A lot of given screen. McMinn, good looking shot. We don't see Colin McMinn take a lot of those shots, but maybe we should. That looks solid. That was the first, I'm being told, that was Kyla McMinn's. Oh, and that's going to go down, MJ Case, with her best Michael Jordan impersonation, squeezes through, tosses it up, and gets it to go. That is back to Kyla McMinn. That was her first three-point attempt of the make, I'm sorry, make of the season. She, she's had a few attempts. So she's shooting 33%. She has had three attempts, one make. Tucker. Smith gets it to Chambers. Tucker. Down to Macy Smith. Yep, and that's going to be a reach in foul. On 22 in the black, that's Delaney Raymer.
Neely Tilly Bedick will be doing the throw in duties. Uh, yeah, a little too much contact. Mason was trying to defend tightly on Chambers. They know Chambers can shoot, so they got to play player extra close. Chambers gets it down to McMinn. McMinn with an all-star type of turn and shoot down on the block, but misses it. And then out of frustration, comes back, tries to get it back and fouls. That's McMinn's second foul. Too much hand checking by Kalen Tucker. Now Bill on the floor foul. Underneath the basket throw in coming to the Eagles. And Audemore checks in for Tucker. That's Tucker's first foul of the game. Moore comes in. She's got to be careful. Actually, I'm sorry, it wasn't Moore that was in foul trouble. Moore has no fouls on the evening. Two great free throws by Mason. That gives her four points so far in tonight's matchup. Off the mark from Neely Tilly Bedick from long range. Now here come the Eagles. Jab step to the right, switching gears. Going come to the left was Jaeger. Case, she's been dominating the whole third quarter. It's just been her quarter, and she's got 11. Bad pass by Autumn Moore. Oh, wide open. You cannot leave her wide open in the corner. She missed that one. Lady Lions dodge a bullet. Billy Tilly Bedick just Go strong to the bucket and makes it go in. Great hustle by McMinn to come away with that one. McMahon. Hit her last one, said, you know what, I'll take another one. Let's, let's just check this thing out. It was a little short. Looked good, though. Hit the foot of McMahon. A lot of scramble on the floor, and Coach Mark Arthur gets the timeout before it gets any worse. So that will be a 30-second timeout for the Eagles. They have five timeouts left. Sagu has three timeouts left. And Lady Lions are not finding it easy right now to get a bucket. And there's a look around the conference. Langston playing over in Oklahoma City at the University of Science and Arts. And MACU, Mid-America Christian University, coming down to Dallas, playing the University of North Texas at Dallas. And 
now we're back in the Schaefer Center with live action. Eagles having their way with the Lady Lions. Right at the buzzer that almost goes in. Great work from the Eagles on offense. We're gonna say McMinn. We'll see if we can see it here. Uh, I, I, I'm, I might have to watch that one again because I don't see anything that would warrant a foul at all. MJ Case having her way tonight with the Lady Lions. Everything going in in the third quarter for her. That miss from the Ravik case playing the two-man game with her center. That one didn't go, but it looked good. Autumn Moore. Moore tries to take it there. Or it was a good idea. And then Moravic ends up fouling from behind. Cheney Chambers and Autumn Moore come off the floor for the Lady Lions. Lavender comes back in. And Tucker. That one bounces off the back of the rim. Moravic gets the rebound. Here come the Lions. Good ball distribution. Lavender, jab step to the left and couldn't get that one to go, but it looked good. She was wide open, good quick move. Now they're asking Lavender to throw it in. Underneath the basket. Mishandled by Tilly Bedick. Unforced turnover. Case throws it out to Jaeger. Jaeger saves it from going out of bounds. Now they get it down to Wade. That one takes two bounces off the rim, comes to Moravic. Here come the Lady Lions. Tucker trying to make something happen. And Jaeger gets called for the foul. By Jaeger's reaction, she felt like she got all ball. Maybe she did. But Tucker will be shooting two free throws. She makes the first. And makes the second. Just seven points scored in the third quarter for the Lady Lions. They are finding it very hard to get a score. Moravic gets the rebound, was unable to push it up. So that was a huge win for the Eagles as far as when you 
count up and look at the quarters, the largest margin of win per quarter came in the third quarter there. So a lot of ground that the Lady Lions have to make up if they want to get competitive in this ball game. They're down 21, 22 points. Looks like science and arts are coming back. They were down by 13 at one point in that game. And that would be a huge upset if Langston could get that win. Science and Art now up two, I see. It's a tight one over in Oklahoma City tonight. Wayland Baptist trying to steal a win. And somebody uh, needs to send Texas Wesley in a, a memo. Just take your foot off the gas pedal. Not saying you got to hit the brakes, but just remove said foot from said gas pedal. There, yeah, clock, uh, clock shut down for when they cut it on. Weird. It's not sending the signal. Don't know if they're going to have to turn the power down on it or what. It, it, it was properly set at the beginning of the quarter to 10 minutes, but the, there is a remote control for the clock that sits on, you know, and you, everyone knows there's a clock operator that switches uh, it on and off. And evidently, some kind of power problem there. So we're trying to get more information on what happened. It looks like maybe they got it fixed. So, yeah. They did. Here comes Tucker. Lavender on the motion wheel. This is where Jazz Williams shines is down in the paint and you can see why there just got to go to that well, drink from that well more until they prove they can't, they just can't make it work. That one gets knocked away by Moravic and Tucker picks it up. She's pushing it, trying to go to the bucket and she's done so well tonight attracting the foul that the defender to come to her and commit the foul. So she'll get to shoot her fifth and sixth free throw of the night. She's four for four so far. Oh, in and out, four for five. And that one's in. It's five for six. Still a good shooting percentage there. Lady Lions are now winning the quarter so far. They're up by three on the Eagles in this quarter. Oh, that's blocked by Moravec. Oh, 
Oh, great ball handling by Case. And she gets the rebound, the put back, it's good, and she's going to go to the free throw line. For a try at a, another point. She has had, this is her third three-point play oh, the old-fashioned way. And that one does not go in. Ball just not bouncing the right way for the Lady Lions. Tucker dribbles that off her shin. Eagles content with just milking the clock. Case misses one somehow. She has had a fantastic game, but especially third quarter. Case has 15 points, five rebounds, and four assists. Those are player of the game numbers. Oh, oh great try, Jazz Williams. They're on the phone right now to 911 because there was a robbery on the Lady Lions end of the, the court. Case goes strong to the bucket, gets fouled by Tucker. And MJ making the case for player of the game, still trying to add to her point total. She misses that one. And I think everyone in the building just expects it to go in when she releases it. And that one, she's missed three free throws now in a row. Autumn Moore gets it to Lavender. Over the top from Jazz Williams. Case gets the rebound. She's pushing it all the way through. If that goes in, it does not. That would have been an assist by Case. Quick shot by Tilly Bedick. And that's a tie up between Williams and none other than MJ Case. She's everywhere. Now coach Mark Arthur has pulled MJ Case off the floor giving her a little instruction just to keep her humble. Oh, that one gets swatted out of bounds by Jazra Williams. Shot clock sticky down, three seconds left. Jaeger with a little fancy dribbling, but gets it stolen from Tilly Bedick. And Neely Tilly Bedick takes an extra step. One, two, three. And that is not allowed.
Jaeger being guarded by Tilly Bedick. <laughs> and that, that's just the referee saying, yeah, look, move your feet. Don't be trying none of that sneaky NBA stuff. We know you see it on TV, but it's not the proper way to play it. Stay in front. Don't be lazy. And that's going to be a little too much elbow from Miss Daisy Lapat. It's just a little too much extension there. Not egregious. The pack guarding Williams. Moravic comes over the middle, gets the rebound. And Lavender with the sloppy pass. Jaeger in the corner, can't leave her open. Tilly Bedick's not leaving her at all. Three seconds. And the buzzer went off before the shot did, and that is called a shot clock violation. So unforced turnover. But the good in that is that you took a lot of time off the clock. Autumn Moore just loses the handles on it. And Jaden Mason gladly took it from her. Wide open. Cassie Colon. And she converts there from about to 12 feet. Good no call, but it did surprise Moravic as she turned around and the defender was there through the shot off just a little bit. That one's no good from long distance. And that's a jump ball. Colon did the dirty work there of going in amongst all the players and trying to grab that rebound. Autumn Moore tied it up. McMinn's in the game for the Lady Lions now. That's way off from Tilly Bedick. Autumn Moore gets it out to Lavender. Lavender relaxes there, and that's what happens. She's a good shooter. She's just been cold all night long. Jaeger. So the, the Eagles doing exactly what coach Mark Arthur is asking them to do, and that is just play very disciplined and controlled offense. They have been consistently taking the shot clock down all the way, and you, you could see 
Just gotten a little too far, but it was a great pass by Jaeger. Mishandled by the big man coming through the middle. But I think the clock would have, shot clock would have gone off no matter what. Good cut with Kaylin Tucker. She gets it out to the side. And they're gonna say that's a travel on Savage. I don't know. Let's see. She's planted. No travel there. And that's going to be a foul on Kyla McMinn. Good push to the basket. But number 13, Morgan Miller. Next foul from Sagu puts the Eagles into the bonus situation. That's going to go to Sagu, last touch. By Kirsten Strain. Off the back of the iron, McMinn gets the rebound though, but a little too strong on the pass out to Savage. Great rebound. Just got to get the pass under control. When it rains, it pours. Sometimes, I guess. Savage playing good defense. Yeah, that's going to be Savage getting off the floor there. You see she lunged, created the contact. Miller gets on the scoreboard. Gets them both to go in. Fellinger comes in for McMinn. This gets down to Mary Jo Parker, trying to work the paint, but it's stolen by Miller. Tucker, Miller gets the foul because she fell on the ground and trying to stop Tucker and reaches up and grabs her. the Lady Lions. Parker gets it to Savage. Savage goes all the way down. Goes in and out. But she will get to shoot two free throws. Savage gets that one to go. That one's off by Savage. Tucker on the ground. And it's a jump ball. And that is your ball game. And that is a 20-point game for 
the Eagles a 20 point win I should say holding the Lions to 39 points which is probably the year's lowest total scoring for the Lady Lions and very interesting yeah, when it's cold, when you go cold, you just, it's hard to find. It's hard to find, and especially when you're 4 and 15. There is a, it, it is a little demotivating. Now, they, they didn't play demotivated. They were playing hard defense and actually held the Eagles under their average. But when you can't get it going offensively, it's just always going to be a struggle to get a win on the board. All right, that does it for part one of this great doubleheader action. And your men's team will be up for part two. The Lions get to host the men's team from Southwestern Christian University. And they're trying to avenge a loss that they took earlier up in Oklahoma. So... This one is going to be lights out, a barn burner, all those cliches that mean it's just going to be good. So stay tuned. We'll be back with some more live action here in the Schaefer Center. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network.